You talk uh, about ramping up. I don't want to interrupt you, Health Secretary, but you talk about ramping up, and yet if you go back to January the 23rd, when COVID-19 first became a problem for the world and Wuhan was locked down, you were in the House of Commons and you made a speech in which you made it quite clear that we were completely prepared. Let's have a look at the clip. The Chief Medical Officer has revised the risk to the UK population from very low to low and has concluded that while there is an increased likelihood that cases may arise in this country, we are well prepared and well equipped to deal with them. The UK is one of the first countries to have developed a world leading test for the new coronavirus, the NHS. So this beggars the question, if we were so well prepared, particularly with testing, why is it that we are still behind the game on testing? Why is it we were so behind the game on PPE? Why is it that we had to go cap in hand, begging manufacturers to make ventilators? Why is it that actually, despite the fact that in 2016 we had a whole pandemic conference with all the government, all the health department people, in which we actually tested as a random exercise exactly what we're now going through, and it drew a number of conclusions, and then you as Health Secretary get up in the House of Commons in January as it begins to blow up and say we are completely prepared. Why is it that the reality is that we turned out to be so underprepared? That's not true. And that is true. Well, it, it's not, and I'm but about it's plainly to... true, isn't it? You haven't had enough PPE, you haven't got enough tests, you didn't have enough ventilators. What was it you were prepared for? Piers, I think you're slightly misjudging the public mood, because I've come on I don't this... give a damn about the public mood. I care about you answering my questions. This is a national emergency. People want to hear the answers to your questions, rather than you just asking you another... You know stop, stop playing that game with me, Mr Hancock, with the greatest of respect to you. Game. You're just buying yourself a bit of time. And the reality is, when you got up and said that you were properly prepared, it, and actually, I would admire you more if you just admitted you weren't properly prepared, rather like Emmanuel Macron has admitted that they weren't prepared. But your resolute refusal to concede that you've made any mistakes here, that grates with me, and I think that also misjudges the public mood, to quote your phrase. I'm now going to answer the previous question and then that question, and you're not going to interrupt me, OK? Let me speak because that is the purpose of... You don't of the actually run this show, but I will actually let you answer the questions. Go on. You've just interrupted me you again. You don't decide how I do an interview, but off you go. No, but I'll decide what I say as health secretary. Sure, and I'll challenge I'll it. How you I do commute. your job and I'll do mine. We took the judgments on the measures that we took at the right time, uh, and the fact that we have successfully got to a peak... And the NHS has been able to expand, so it's always been available. So it hasn't, unlike what we saw, for instance, in Italy and Lombardy with those terrible and very sad scenes at, right at the start of the European outbreak, um, I think that that has been, that part when has been... When you talk about success, Health Secretary, we now have the fifth highest death rate in the world. If you include the likely care home deaths, I think we move to third in the world. You have a strange, different view of what success looks like to me. The care home explosion is happening. It is extremely dangerous for everyone that is there. Our death toll is rocketing by nearly a 1,000 a day. We were warned yesterday by Chris Whitty to expect even bigger numbers as this week goes on. This hasn't been, by any definition, a success.